If there is good, there must also be evil. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 4, Episode 2, Are You There God? It's me, Dean Winchester. And now I'm starting to really remember why this season was so good, and why all of y'all have said so many good things about this season. I don't know why I do, but I just keep forgetting all of the really good building that happens in this season. For Season 5 to be as good as it was, it obviously had to have some stepping stones to get there, and Season 4 is doing that. And it starts off not only with the first episode, laying down the groundwork that there there are angels and there is a plan for God, but also the beginning of the apocalypse and the existence of Lucifer being confirmed. For up until this point, we had only had a little bit of teasing with him, especially with the Sin City episode back in season three, but this episode fully confirms it as one of the 66 seals is broken with the rise of the witnesses. And I like the idea that the witnesses aren't just people who died randomly, it's people who died on others watch those who they could not save so not only is the guilt of their death literally standing in front of them it is burrowing it inside them to the point where it rips them apart both emotionally and physically and before i go any further with the review just letting you guys know that i have started up a patreon account but i'll talk more about that at the end of the video as well as a different uh announcement that talking about how i'm going to be reviewing supernatural so stay tuned for those this episode has the brothers and bobby fighting to survive all the while being plagued by their previous failures those being meg Agent Henriksen, Chris Gauthier. I actually just know this guy. I've worked with him before in the past, so it's cool to see Chris back. I think this is the last time we'll see him in this show. And I like how you are finding out a little bit more about their characters. Chris doesn't really have much. He just talks about how he's going to eat people. But Meg, you find out not only was the failure of her death a blow to the brothers, but it was also a blow to her family, a blow to her sister. And then we find out a little bit more about Agent Henriksen and apparently what happened to them. I'm still kind of on the fence as to what actually happened because it sounds so horrific. Oh no, it couldn't actually have happened, but this is what Agent Henriksen is saying. I like how malevolent they are. I like how kind of unrestricted they are with laying the guilt down on the boys and Bobby. And while the weird double sisters from The Shining thing is a little odd considering season three literally had Bobby being demented by his wife, maybe they didn't want to touch on that again. I feel that that would have been a little bit more of a personal thing because the girls kind of doesn't really do it for me. But as per quo with Bobby, if there's a bad thing about him, there's always usually a good thing. And he has the panic room. I forgot about this room. I couldn't believe I forgot about it considering how pivotal it is in this season. It's such a cool room. It's such a cool idea. It's such a cool concept. It's so well made by the set deck team. So definitely give them props for that. Then after they're able to get rid of all the witnesses, there's that really damn cool conversation with Castiel and Dean and his dream sort of. You guys remember when this dude was intimidating? Y'all remember when he was an actual character aside from a bumbling psychic when he says i raised you from hell i can put you back in it it's just so cool to see misha collins have some balls He's so good at this version of Cass, and it's gonna be great to see this, and it's gonna be terrible to see him eventually degrade into what he becomes in as I keep going along. By the way, this is a very exceptional episode. There are a few tidbits here and there that are not the greatest. Like I said, the, the, the weird sisters thing doesn't really work. The fact that when Dean shoots the chandelier and it falls on Meg, he didn't need to say anything. He, we got the point, but he just says, Iron. Who is that for? Was that for us? Did we all of a sudden become real stupid and forget what the lore of the show is? Not to say that the latter seasons would <clears throat> do that. It's still a great episode though. It lays down a lot of the groundwork and it starts to build what is the catharsis for this season and going into season five. So in the end, I'm gonna give this episode a six out of seven. Now I did ask you guys at the end of the last episode review to give me your comments about this episode and all y'all were actually just talking about how good <laughs> season four was, but there was two of you who did make comments about this episode, so I'm gonna read those now. Merry Christmas. I think you will appreciate this season much more now. It ages quite well. Are You There is a good, very tense episode. We have several characters come back from the dead, but for actual storyline purposes. The existence of Lucifer is confirmed, and this episode, particularly in its closing scene, sets up the main storyline issue for the remainder of the season, stopping with the rise of Lucifer. Two parts that stuck out 
to me are the reappearance of Henriksen, who also reviewed some disturbing details of what actually happened the night Lilith visited the police station in Season 3's Justin Bellow, and the threat that Cass makes to Dean at the end. Back when Cass had some balls and was an important character. Enjoy. I definitely did. And yes, those are some really good points about that. And then we got one more. Love Season 4 Episode 1, getting a 7 out of 7. Enjoy the early scene with Dean trying to come to terms with the angels being real and, and them having a role for Dean. Time to strap on your party hat. And of course, the two ending scenes, especially with Castiel in the kitchen. Agree that scary badass warrior of God Cass is best. His parting words, you should show me some respect. I dragged you out of hell. I can throw you back in. Is so goddamn threatening. I mean, Dean is my main man, but... I love any character that has the strength to put him in his place because it doesn't happen often and it's always an interesting dynamic. Yeah, that actually is a very good point and that's something that I feel the latter season, especially the last <clears throat> the last three seasons of this show, did not do. And I'm not talking about 1, 2, 3. I'm talking about 13, 14, 15. And now we're going on to episode 3, which is in the beginning, so please give me your guys' comments about that episode, and I will read those off in the next episode review. And as I said earlier, I started up a Patreon account. I just more so wanted to start something to kind of involve you guys a little bit more, as well as if there's any of you who want to support the channel, it's greatly appreciated. Anything that you feel like you would like to do, um, there's a few different tiers, and it's very basic right now because I didn't want to do anything superficial. So check it out, it's in the description below, and I'm going to be doing an announcement about it. And tomorrow. And the other announcement about this is how I'm going to be reviewing Supernatural episodes. As now that we don't have any Supernatural episodes happening on Thursday, any new ones for forever, I will be doing my review releases every Thursday. And I'm gonna try and be consistent with this. I did the math about it and it, it would take me about something odd like two years or something if I did it every Thursday from here until the end. That's the idea that I've got going so far. I'm thinking I might try and do a little bit more in between here and there. Hopefully you guys are ready because every Thursday is going to be a supernatural review for season four unless something awful happens or something. But let's hope that doesn't happen. 2021, gonna be good, right? Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, here's to 2021 not being poopy. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.